As a big thank you to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons for honoring me as the Plastic Surgeon of the Week, I thought it fitting to go through the history of this important organization, which has done so much to advance the field and change people's lives. The history of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons is essentially the history of modern plastic surgery as we know it. Let's take a quick trip back in time to the earliest days of American plastic surgery. America's first plastic surgeon of note was Dr. John Peter Medauer, who was born in Virginia in 1787. In 1827, he performed the world's first cleft palate operation with instruments he designed himself. A pretty amazing feat considering this occurred in the earliest days of what we have come to know as the Industrial Revolution. Since then, the utility of plastic surgery really corresponded to periods of war, presenting reconstructive challenges that forced surgeons to push the envelope in the pursuit of restoring shattered lives. World War I presented the first pivotal moment in the advancement of plastic surgery with some of the more modern concepts of facial reconstruction being deployed to reconstruct faces disfigured from war injuries. But plastic surgery was a fledgling specialty in the early 1900s and had no formal organization whereby scientific and clinical experiences could be shared. That is, until two European surgeons involved in the reconstruction of traumatic injuries sustained by soldiers in World War I came to America. Those two plastic surgeons were Dr. Jacques Maliniak and Gustav Offricht. The two quickly gained outstanding reputations in their field, but were shunned at the time by the only real organization that came close to their plastic surgery profession, and that was the American Association of Oral Surgeons. In response to this rejection, Maliniak took action and recruited 10 other charter members from related fields, along with Offric, to establish the American Society of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgeons in 1931. At that time, the group met to discuss scientific papers, mostly written by Dr. Maliniak himself. They consisted mostly of surgeons from related fields, such as otolaryngology, but was yet to be recognized as its own subspecialty. One of its earliest members, Dr. Vilray Blair from St. Louis, went to the American Board of Surgery at the time to convince them to establish the American Board of Plastic Surgery by the late 1930s. The organization began conducting certification of physicians seeking to become plastic surgeons and was formally brought under the umbrella of the American Board of of medical specialties in 1941. By the 1940s, America found itself in another world war and a dubious opportunity arose to once again expand the field through innovation. Treating soldiers and civilians caught in the carnage of World War II provided ample opportunity to test new ideas and expand knowledge in fields such as limb reconstruction and burn surgery. As the specialty grew, the American Society of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgeons had approximately 150 members by the end of the 1940s. It was during these years that Dr. Maliniak pushed to establish the educational arm of the organization, which later became known as the Plastic Surgery Foundation, or PSF. This body was responsible for physician exchange programs, fellowships to all parts of the world to expand knowledge in the field and to encourage the development of new techniques that would form the basis for so many advances we see today. In conjunction with establishment of the PSF, Dr. Offrick was busy in the development of another vital educational tool. His focus was on establishing a scientific journal targeted specifically for plastic surgeons in order to formally disseminate knowledge and innovation. This became known as the Journal of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, which debuted in 1946. In his foreword of the very first edition, Dr. Vilray Blair summarized the importance of plastic surgery. Quote, Either as the primary objective or after tissue destruction, plastic procedures are an essential part of every operation done by the general surgeon or specialist. He then goes on to write, plastic surgery is essentially constructive, fosters refinements of technique and rests upon the underlying principles of all surgery. Never was there a truer statement highlighting the importance of plastic surgery. As the years went by, advancements in plastic surgery techniques and knowledge continued to evolve with the Korean and Vietnam Wars, especially in areas of fixation of facial fractures, flap reconstructions, and even limb salvage. By the 1950s, the field of plastic surgery and its unique focus on patterns of vascular perfusion and tissue transfer were expanding into other arenas. This was when Nobel laureate and fellow plastic surgeon, Dr. Joseph Murray, performed the world's first successful kidney transplant between a set of twin brothers, introducing the world to the unique power of plastic surgery to change lives 
in not so obvious ways. Innovation continued to develop in plastic surgery over time thanks to the efforts of the members of the American Society of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgeons. But public perception was that plastic surgery was distinctly different than reconstructive surgery. Some of this was due to the popularity of plastic surgery being performed for cosmetic improvement, notably in celebrities, and was getting more of a reputation of a consumable product for the vein. In an effort to change this image in 1994, the organization dropped the reconstructive title from its name to officially become the American Society of Plastic Surgeons that we know today. This was done to signal to the public and others in the medical profession that plastic and reconstructive surgery were indeed one and the same. The same procedures that can transform an individual cosmetically can restore a person's identity and function. Today, there are over 11,000 active members of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons worldwide. The organization continues to make headway in advocacy, awareness, and healthcare reform. Through its efforts in the political sphere, the organization has targeted unsafe practices in cosmetic surgery, lobbied for the approval of breast reconstruction and other vital reconstructive procedures for coverage by insurance carriers, and blocked efforts of non-plastic surgical specialists attempting to perform plastic surgery with unqualified and inadequate training. I have been a proud member of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons for the past 12 years, and I'm extremely grateful for the opportunities this association has provided me. If you're considering plastic surgery of any kind, make sure your surgeon is an active member who proudly displays the symbol of excellence of the ASPS. See you next time.